This is my 1936 Sloan and Chase lathe set up for gear cutting. Um, I'm using uh, the um, rotary table um, which I converted uh, to run on uh, a division controller so that it's controlled here and uh, that's proved to be excellent uh, so I can have any number of divisions um, and it is nice and solid so there's no movement in it uh, and in fact rather surprisingly this looks a little bit of a Heath Robinson setup but it is, it, it's just quite rigid and um, the slide here it's a Sherline slide sitting on top of an angle which is on top of a new sorry a cross slide which I bought separately and fixed onto the lathe uh, using the um, plate that came with it and I don't use the Ch Sloan and Chase parts which makes this a bigger table to fix onto and that works really well so in order to cut gears <coughs> the first thing to do is to set up uh, a scriber on centre height and you'll see on the extreme right hand side where the tailstock nose is I've set up a scriber here on a plate it's exactly on centre height so if I move that <coughs> now up to here set this down on the top and then scribe a line across and then having scribed the line across I then need to turn this 90 degrees up so on here I go to division, number of divisions, 0, 0, 0, 4, press the G, and then I go back one. And that makes the vertical line that I scribed come up vertically, sorry, the horizontal line I scribed with the scriber turn round till it comes up at 90 degrees. So now it's just a matter of getting the cutter centred on that line and the easiest way to do that is to move the cutter in and down so that it sits on top of the line and then I get an eye loop here and line up underneath here as, as best I can that's not quite in the right position so let's move it slightly screws, locking screws which are locked at the moment. And I can adjust this with the eye loop on. Right, the cutter is now sitting right in the middle of that line that I scribed. And the reason for that is to make sure that the teeth are cut absolutely vertically. So I'll just tighten these up. Lock the lock nuts. Move this back. Now the way I set this up, it... Um, <coughs> only goes up, sorry, back until that reaches there and only goes forward 
until it's just over at the end of the blank, which is the best possible situation. Now I go to here and reset this. So it's two divisions, and this time I want to have. Um, I'm doing 50 teeth. So it's O, 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 I, O. I'm ready to cut those. I'm going to switch the motor on. And the first thing to, I want to do is to do one pass with it set fairly high and then I run um, the next tooth round and do another pass and the object is to try and get the witness or um, blue line so that it's visible and I do it by eye rather than by setting the amount that this has gone down uh, and that seems to work quite well. So The original wheels have quite a flat on the top of them um, but I've chosen to make mine just a little bit deeper but they make quite nicely with it so I'm quite happy with that and I'll show you that later. So we're now in a position where we can run one cut through and I found that I need to run this at uh, 900 RPM. Now you will find that this is making a, a noise which indicates, and you can see it probably in the cutter, it's not completely concentric. And the reason for that is uh, that the spindle in here, uh, the collet, either there's, play, there's um, eccentricity in the collet or in the uh, collet holder, and um, I haven't had time to deal with that, so, but it will cut fair enough like this. So. This is um, 7075 aluminium which is quite tough to cut um, and I just put a little bit of sheet across the top here just make, do a little bit of protection from the bits getting tossed into the gubbins Right, now I think I can probably close this up a little bit so I'm going to get it a little bit closer in. Now I'll do it first of all just so that it's wide enough for you to see it with the um, rotary table turning. I've now got that down so that it's um, producing a, a flat across the top of the teeth that's about the same as uh, the, the flat that I had across on the other teeth and that mates nicely with the wheels that are on there on the mill on the lathe at the moment so now I'll just cut these through um, and away we go to cut 50 teeth
I'll move the camera position so you can see it from this angle. Now I've gone round, cut all the teeth and just go on to the next one and just check to see it goes through. Perfect. So that's all 50 teeth cut without any drama. That's now finished um, cutting the teeth and um, I can remove that now. And now I'm doing <coughs> this. Take it off. And these are the teeth, which are quite small, only 30 dp, 14.5 pressure angle. Um, and that's another wheel that it would have to make with, you can see, perfect. Act quite nicely, it's just a little bit of play if you move it away, so that's just a little bit of play if you, if you move it away. And it runs right to the bottom, so that's good. I think that will that will be fine. And these are the other wheels that I've already cut. And 
And this is the large compound gear that's 127 teeth and um, 75 uh, or maybe 50. Um, it'll be one or the other. So it's good.